Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us, tmasso at the 1916company.com. It is in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Reach out to us directly for pricing, tmasso at the 1916company.com. For the 70th anniversary of the Breitling Navitimer, Breitling launched a series of lively dials. The original Navitimer per Breitling launched in 1952. So the mint colored dial that you're looking at right here came out in 2022. 70 years young, the Navitimer is one of the longest produced chronographs in the business. The first full-featured flight calculator originally created along with the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association for aviators back in the 1950s. It was the follow-up to the earlier chronomat, which introduced, at least at Breitling, the use of a circular slide rule calculator. The Navitimers was more comprehensive. So the watch we have here is modern in every regard, and you can tell that because of the color, because of the size, because of the quality fit and finish of the bracelet, as well as the presence of a date and automatic winding. But it keeps the essential aesthetic and proportions of the historic Navitimer. In steel, this is the Breitling Navitimer B01 Chronograph 43, the 43 being the diameter in millimeters. From lug tip to lug tip, the case is 48.9 millimeters, but if we add the end links to the bracelet, it is ever so slightly broader at 50 millimeters from end link to end link, 14 millimeters thick. There is a 22 millimeter spacing in between the lugs, another feature characteristic of modern watches. So on the wrist, this is a wonderfully proportioned lug set. Now you can see that the lugs are a little bit shorter than you might have found in the 2000s and 2010s at Breitling. Was Back then, bigger was better and biggest was best. George Kern, who's been CEO of Breitling since 2017, has talked about paring down lugs. And so this 43 millimeter watch wears really nicely on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. It's not a thin watch, but it will fit under a jacket cuff. You can see that fairly well in profile. Over the top, which always exaggerates the width of the watch, you can see the lugs are still not over the edge of my wrist. The definitive shot, as always, is down the barrel where you can really see I've got a lot of clearance. I'd recommend this for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference. So we've got the Navitimer bracelet here. It's a little bit like the Pilot, but it is a seven link design. You can see there's a conforming end link. It tapers as we move toward the clasp. We have alternating satin finished and polished links, removable links fixed by screws and quite a few of them. You can see we have an intermediate size link on each side in case you are in between sizes. The bracelet actually vents pretty well. As you can see, there are many gaps between the links. They also help to avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. Taking a quick look at the clasp, clasps and bracelets have been a major improvement across the board since 2017 and the new ownership at Breitling. And I have to say that the feeling and the appearance is a lot more upscale now. It's more thoughtfully designed and everything feels more solid. This is a double fold and you can see it is a sequential one side before the other and then twin trigger release so you press the two triggers and then it opens. One is not enough so it's very secure. Now in terms of vintage aspects, I would say the narrow case band and the squared off lug profiles are the element that most directly recall the original Navitimers of the 50s. Those are generally features of vintage watches from the period. We have pump style pushers, a Breitling B on a push down crown, and the watch is 30 meters water resistant. We have an array of polish and satination so that there's a little bit of healthy contrast. You can also see within the recesses of the bezel, media blasting with the outer face is polished. Now what may look like a plexi is actually a dramatically domed sapphire here. So you get a little bit of that off axis distortion that you get on a vintage plexi, but make no mistake, it's sapphire, it's quite scratch resistant. So the flight calculator, it's a logarithmic scale circular slide rule. And those of you who are familiar with slide rules, maybe from practice or from casual interest, it's not something people generally use for engineering anymore, but you've seen the ones with multiple scales, and this does not have many complex scales. Primarily, we are looking at a slide rule design for multiplication and division, and here's how it works. So let's say I want to divide 80 by 40. Well, I'm going to take 80, I'm going to put it over 40 on the inner scale, so right here, right there, and it works like a fraction. 
80 divided by 40, we go to the index, which is this little 10 on the inner scale. 80 divided by 40 is 2. you got to keep your decimals in mind. Now, let's say I want to multiply 15 by 3. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 15 over the 10. Now, it works in reverse. And I'm going to find 3 on the inner scale. And so 15 times 3 is 45. I find the 3. Now, I've got... 45. That's how it works. It's very simple. It's very basic. You can see it also mentions things like nautical, statute, miles, kilometers. It can be used for gauging everything from your rate of ascent, descent, ground speed, drift, fuel consumption. It's quite functional and quite handy once you get the knack of it. And you can see that there are quite a few different colors on this dial. We have a sunburst center, radially arrayed, brushed, and this is mint green. That's what Breitling calls this. You could see that we have the AOPA wings, the Aircraft Owners and Pilot Association wing and shield logo that was featured on the original 1950s, the earliest of the Breitling Navitimers. Now that would have featured AOPA, the letters on the cross member of the shield. Here we have as much of the logo from the original as we can use without offending the owners. Now taking a quick look here, you can see all applique indices. That's another upscale modern feature you wouldn't have seen on the originals. The watch does have luminescence, so you can see the time but not the chronograph functions. These sub-registers are slightly countersunk and dished with concentric patterns inboard, and the watch does have a well-hidden date, the date disc being black with white lettering or numbering, I should say. It is a white font, and so you can see that they've done things mostly right here is that three is the same as that three though if we jump to the bezel you can see there are two different threes two different fonts on this dial but we have a quick set system for the date and we have a hacking or stop seconds function so you can synchronize the watch to a reference timer we have a chronograph that features both a column wheel and a vertical clutch. So thanks to the vertical clutch, you can keep the watch running on a continuous basis with no additional hazard wear or tear. Back up the video a few seconds. You can see it also has semi-instantaneous jumping minutes. But the vertical clutch allows for smooth engagement because there's no inherent play in a vertical clutch. There's no toothed interaction to the engagement like with a lateral clutch. And again, you can leave it running on a full-time basis, one of the advantages of a vertical clutch system. Now on the reverse, you could see the column wheel function selector right there. And the Breitling B01 has one of the best feeling and sounding column wheel actions. Really quite pleasing. Satisfying like Rolex 4130 or Zenith El Primero Caliber 400. Also, I would compare it favorably to the Longa L951. That's heady company. Automatic winding with a 70-hour power reserve, 47 joules, 4 hertz beat rate, 5 position adjusted, COSC certified Swiss chronometer. This is Breitling's own in-house caliber introduced back in 2009. It was never designed for display case backs, but fortunately it's fairly large and fairly handsome. So it's taken to the display case backs well. Again, it is a certified chronometer with all that entails for accuracy. You can see that there is a, a little eccentric screw micrometric regulator, but also Etichron for fine timing and beat error correction. So this can be adjusted quite precisely. You can see the little Breitling mid-century overlapping double aircraft logo right here. A couple of references to Breitling's glorious aviation past. If you love this watch, reach out. I am T. Masso at the1916company.com for purchase and pricing details.